This begins a lesson on practice test B, thermochemistry. We're going to look at the first four objectives for our test this week. The tools that we need out, of course, we need our calculator. You need your practice test B and something to write with. Let's go ahead and take a peek at the first objective, number one. Reading that together, it's asking for the relationship between mass, specific heat, and temperature change to calculate heat flow during a chemical or a physical process. This entire objective makes use of the Q equal MC delta T equation, where Q, of course, stands for heat in a physical process. Heat comes to us in a unit as joules. M stands for the mass of our object given to us in a unit of grams. C stands for the specific heat content given to us in a unit of joules per gram degree Celsius. And the delta T variable stands for the change in temperature And that's simply found by taking the final temperature minus the initial temperature. How much the temperature changed is the variable mc delta t. Keep in mind, we talked about a, a little equation helper. If you'd like to draw this in your margin with me as a helper, q is m times c times delta t. We know that we can cover the variable we're solving for and pull out the missing link. Again, four variables, three will be given, fine for the missing variable. Very easy objective. Specific heat of aluminum in question one is given to us as 0 0.90 joules per gram Kelvin. Don't let the K bother you. The Kelvin scale is an absolute scale used in science. We can further discuss that in the next unit. But joules per gram Kelvin is the specific heat. So there we have the C variable given, 0 0.90 joules per gram degree Celsius. How many kilojoules of heat, so heat is our target variable, are necessary to raise the temperature of a 15.5 kilogram block of aluminum from 13 degrees to 79.5 degrees? Here's the initial and the final temperature. Being asked to solve for Q, this is our target variable. M times C times delta T. Recall though, for units, the specific heat constant is giving us per gram degrees Celsius. This kilogram must be adjusted to a gram. So I know that there is a thousand grams per kilogram and that will be the M we have to MC delta T with. 15,500 grams. And again, we must do that so that our units indeed match. Q is the target variable. Q is found by taking the mass measured in a gram times the specific heat, 0 0.90 joules per gram Kelvin unit. And the delta T, if I take the final 79.5 and subtract 13, I can find that the temperature changed by 66.5 degrees. 15,500, the mass, times 0.9, the specific heat, times 66.5, hit it with your calculator, and my screen says a rather large number, 927,675, and that's a joule. Recall, however, they asked for kilojoules, how much heat in a kj. So, little decimal slide, we know that indeed there is one kilojoule in every thousand joules. So we'll divide by a thousand to convert that unit. And when we do so, our answer, 927 and I'll round 0.7 kilojoules of heat. MC delta T, where M has to be in a gram times the specific heat constant times its delta T. Once we found joules, we divided by a thousand to pull out kilojoules. 
Let's go on reading a little bit for number two. How many, let me start that over, how many, how much heat energy in joules is absorbed? So again, absorbing heat means endothermic when 1.5 moles of water is warm from 30 to 40, 30 to 89.3. How much heat? So again, our target is Q. M stands for mass. We have a little mole map work to do. M is not mole number, it's mass number. 1.5 moles of water times its molar mass, 18 grams in every one mole. Two H is added to an O, is going to find for me the mass. 1.5 times 18 converts it to 27 grams of water. So step one, I had to get the correct unit before I can MC delta T. The other thing we're expected to know is the specific heat constant for water. We're learning to memorize 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius, that constant that we should memorize for our test day. Looking for heat, heat is Q. Q is M, which is 27 grams of water, times the specific heat, 4.184 joules per gram degrees Celsius. How much did that temperature change by? Well, the final temperature, 89.3 minus 30 degrees, shares that 59.3 degrees Celsius is indeed its delta T. Mass times specific heat times delta T, and we'll come out in a joule. Hit it with me. See if we get a common answer. 59.3 times 4.184 times 27. I did it in reverse order because I had that on my screen first. I get 6699 joules of energy being absorbed. I know it's positive. I'll hit again just to be sure. 27 times 4.184 times 59.3. Got the same thing. Good algebra check. Let's read for number three. A chunk of silver has a heat capacity of 236 joules per degree Celsius. The silver has a mass of one kilogram. Calculate the specific heat. Good time to review these definitions. Heat capacity. How much energy does it take to raise the entire object by one degree Celsius? There, I written it correctly. Heat capacity. How much energy is needed to raise the entire object by one degree Celsius? Recall specific heat. How much energy does it take to raise one gram of the object by one degree Celsius? See the difference between the terms heat capacity versus specific heat. We have to introduce the gram variable into the bottom, and it's as easy as that. We're given 236 joules per degree Celsius as the heat capacity. One kilogram introduces 1,000 grams into the bottom unit. Joules per gram degree Celsius, 236 divided by 1,000, and we have 0.236. We have now converted heat capacity of silver into specific heat of silver, joule per gram degree Celsius. With this problem, simply take the specific heat value as a joule per gram Celsius, introducing the gram variable. When a certain substance has a mass of 50 grams, and it's heated from 30 degrees to 65 degrees, it absorbs 245 joules of heat energy. Calculate the specific heat. Once we have the specific heat, we can match it to the table of standards and find the substance. The mass variable is 50 grams. We're looking for specific heat. Delta T, well, it started at 65. From 30, it changed by 35 degrees, the difference between 65 and 30. 
my m my c my delta t set equal to heat energy 245 joules let's pull out c key sequence 245 divided by parenthesis 50 times 35 close parenthesis equal pulling out c 245 joules divided by the product of 50 times 35. I found 0.14 joule per gram degree Celsius. Who does that match? Well, it matches mercury right here. So I'm indicating that my substance was mercury by calculating its specific heat, 0.14 joule per gram Celsius. One more in our first objective. This is solution chemistry. We have 175 mils of a reactant HCl. We're adding that to 175 mils to a second reactant, sodium hydroxide. We've learned that an acid will indeed react with a base and force neutralization. It's the combined volume that ends up to be the mass that we MC delta T with. The extra numbers, the moles of HCl and the moles of NaOH are not part of the actual solution. Um, we're just simply combining the volumes. And we know that the density of water is indeed 1, so 350 mils gives us 350 grams of our water solution. The combined volume is the M that we MC delta T with. We pour those two solutions together and it's a chemical change. So technically this is known as enthalpy. It's not a physical Q but a delta H for a reaction. Not that it changes the math, it's just a technical term for breaking bonds and forming new bonds. We're being asked to calculate how much heat in kilojoules was released by this reaction. And again, we know that the combined volume, 350 mils, gives us the mass. We've memorized the specific heat of water, 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. Temperature started at 22.5 and it warmed to 36 degrees. How much did it change by? Looks like 13.5 degrees Celsius. Solving for the enthalpy of our reaction, 350 times 4.184 times 13.5. We get a rather large number, and that's fine because we know we're in joules. 1976, let me start that over, 1969.4 joules of energy. I simply divide by a thousand to get a more reasonable answer. 19.77 we want to say. And there's your kilojoules. Notice here technically is how much was released by this reaction. We could designate that we know it's exothermic. Exo is heat releasing by including a negative sign for the delta H. Negative 19.77 kJs. You've completed the first objective. Give yourself an A+. When ready, let's go on to objective two.